Sorry. Welcome back to NZ My Pro. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to do a final clean up in here. I'm going to just run over with the flappy wheel, just on a couple of little welds and just knock the tops off. Run around with the wire wheel um, on the, that one and the, what do you mean? Uh, I'll reach that one. Bugger it. I might just have to try and get all that. I ain't climbing in there there. Oh. Yeah, I might better get it if I have to. Um, so yeah, I'm going to knock a few tops off with some weld. Run around with a wire brush on the grinder. Try and get as much as I can cleaned up. Just so I get any other loose stuff off. Um, bugger it. I really want that. <laughs> so I can blow out in here, give it a good blow out and clean down. And then I'm going to hit the back of this with this stuff. I'll get another can there if I need it. And there's not a lot of left in here, but it'll get me started and then I can finish the rest off with this. And then, um, yeah, then we'll seam seal around joins and bits and pieces. Hopefully this is okay, otherwise I'll have to go get some more. Um, we'll go from here. Let's watch it another. Shoot it through here, it's like four. Oh no, I went to use it, it was buggered, wasn't it? Um, yeah, that's right. So yeah, that's, that's the plan for the next few minutes anyway. Hopefully it won't take me too long to rip around this and clean it up. This will do the work. This will do 90% of the job anyway, neutralizing the rust and sealing it all up and then you yeah, seal, seal it and then at some point it'll be texture coated and whatever over top, you know, the majority of this will be texture coated. Just have to tape up any of the body holes that we don't want texture coat running flowing back through from the outside so I don't want the outside to the top thing but that'll be a few days down the line. I'd rather get the bodywork. We can paint. We can do it here you now before we paint that side of the top thing. Anyway, we'll uh, get to it. Righty, so it's had a reasonable dose, and it may get another one in the in the bottom just by leaning over. Um, but that should seal up the worst of the rust that's ever going to come back through, if you know what I mean, um, and stop it. Well, it, it, it wouldn't even stop, but at least it would be it'll be fairly well slowed down now and. One of those things, as long as it's re fairly dry, it should never really come to too much, if you know what I mean. You know, not in my lady lifetime, like it's lasted a hundred years now. Um, what was on there was cleaned up fairly well, and it's just it's flashed a little bit, so it's unfortunate that it just didn't get treated quick enough. But that's one of those things, just shit happens, you know what I mean. Um, but it's been fairly well treated, we might just give it another dose. And then, yeah, it'll get 
texture coat in there. It'll get a very light scuff with scotch bright just to make sure it does key. And um, we do the texture coat in there. You may even get a you know a light coat of primer in there or something like that. But we're going to put seam sealer around there. Yet. You know, we'll seam seal all around the bits and pieces, and we'll seam seal them down around. There's like drain holes in there, so we won't obviously go over them. But we'll just make sure that the water can't get into some of the weird places like it could. Um, but yeah, done, sorted, cleaned up, so we should be pretty good. Um, yeah, and then we'll obviously we'll do the rest as we go forward a bit. Um, but I think what I'm going to do now is just knock off a few welds that I touched up before I come on camera um, after the end of the last video. Grind them up. I might put a scotchy on the um, cord grinder. Whip around the back of it. Give that a bloody good clean up. Um, I might contemplate just see if I can maybe pop another block underneath the back of here just to give it a wee lift just so it's a little bit easier to work on because um, I'll probably do it on the chair and then yeah we'll give it a quick etch and um, by that stage hopefully I can get it if I can get out the whole thing and etched it before lunch I will but otherwise I might just flick the back and then clean up the rest so I can get some mud on there after lunch. Um, yeah, just skim coat, especially the bottom, and where I've done the major repairs, and then we'll tackle the rest later because it's actually fairly. The rest of it's actually fairly straight. Like there'll be a little bits, and they probably it'll probably get a full mud down this edge because it's a bit ripply and it was bent and twisted there a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think once they sort of get around the pass of their back and that bottom sort of third to half I think the rest of it should be pretty good anyway we'll get this stuff cleaned up and we'll carry on Righty, so I've got some prime on the back. Um, actually, the top half of that body feels really good at the back. It's really good. Um, and even the body filler blends in pretty well into that piece. You can see where it's... We're getting a little closer. You can see where it's got the dark shadows in the bottom. That's where it really needs a bit more filler. Um, I haven't obviously done this far. So, you know, from the that boss for the spear wheel holder. Um, I haven't done anything from that side back across yet, apart from just not 90 percent well, the worst it off with the DA just to get it flat ish. Um, so, I'll do the same on this side now, and we'll just see where we're at and we'll just see we need to spread any more mud. 
but I think the back of it's going to come up pretty quick. Might need a little bit more work on the sides yet. Um, so obviously we um, need a bit more fill through here. It's pretty good up until you come around to about, about here in this area. This all feels pretty reasonable. It might need a little bit of filler just in this bit, but the rest of it actually feels pretty good. It might need a little bit more, just some, another wee spread over here just to try and get. Um, but there's a bit of filler that hasn't sanded off, you know, it's got a hole in it. But apart from that, um, we just spread a little bit over there and just blend it back out. I think it's pretty good apart from you know, down there. Um, and up here, it kind of needs, I think that this whole piece needs filled and then just evened out. That's a bit through here where it's, um, where it's had repairs before. Like it's had a, a piece join in here before. But it's not very, it's not bad, but it's not terribly straight, if you know what I mean. But it's not that bad. But you could come along and maybe knock a few down. Um, but it's, it's not probably really worth chasing too much. You're not going to gain a lot. You're better off just to put a skin down through there and just block it flat. But it's pretty good up to we sort of get into this area, if you know what I mean. A little bit in here, but. The rest that needs mud and just blend it out, probably back to about here, and then just most of this will be able to sand off until you get to somewhere in this ballpark, I think. You know, and down here, we'll just, the rest of it will just get that sand right off up until about here somewhere. Dipping in about here somewhere. Just put a mark up on the top, I like to on the side. But um, it's pretty good. And that's sort of where it starts to just get a little bit funny. So we should get a reasonable, we should get most of the body filler off here if we just blend it back a little bit further and come up. We should get rid of the bulk of this and just straighten it out. So I have a quick look at the outside and um, whatever. The old fan does a good job of just shifting the dust away so you're not like as much as um, you know, mask works good it can be a pain in the ass sometimes too. <laughs> I should be wearing one but I find my fan. The worst of what I'm breathing if you know what I mean. As long as it's blown away from it's not bad. Mm, looks quite good. Yeah, this is kind of the same. It's it's pretty reasonable. Sort of until about this area. It's, it's not even that bad up here, it's just along this top part, but it's a bit lumpy down here because it's, again it's been replaced in here early on in its life. When I don't know, but I'm guessing probably, who would know, 40s or 50s or could have been even earlier, you know. You wouldn't know. But we know that the family's had it since the 60s and 80s. As far as I know, if they'd done that repairs, why they didn't do the rest of it properly, I no freaking clue. <laughs> but, um, so in theory, apart from the wee bit in here, once we sort of block it off, it should be pretty good. I'm all sort of similar sort of position. I think it should be to get it fairly clean. It's really clean, just top part of the body. I don't feel 
here until you sort of get down to about here. Like we'll really find out when we put high build on and start blocking out. Do a couple of guide coats. Use the top texture obviously as a guide coat to start off with. But yeah, I think it should come up fairly, fairly easy. Hopefully I don't have to do too much body to it. I cut the back of that thing. I muddled it all the way to the top because it was quite warped. So we placed instead of down here, it was up in here in places. So the whole thing was sort of a bit distorted. I think it should be pretty good. We'll just have to do another small skim across the bottom, I think. Just to get rid of the highs and highs. But I'll just give this a wee mist and then just block it off a bit more just to see where it kind of really needs it like the other side and I think it'll be, it'll be good. That'll be the back part of that body done. We'll just have to, again, we'll just we'll mud this whole front part from there. We'll come just back behind and we'll scrape it pretty thin here. And we'll just mud right the way around back to here. We just, the outer skin overlaps that. That was, um, it never had, never really had anything in it, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, it was just always just, it was just painted. So a few coats of paint over that, and whatever. It'd be good, I think. That's pretty much how it was originally. So that's cool. You can see where the some of the high spots and stuff are, but it's pretty even from the back. Might have a little bit of a might have a little lull in back here somewhere. That feels pretty good. <coughs> All right. Alrighty, so I think I might actually come back down later on and try and clean this one up and see where that's at and um, sand off this second lot of body filler on this back of this body. Um, I still need a wee bit more in places, even at the moment, but I just it's not quite off enough yet for me to sand. And it's almost five o'clock, so it's probably better off to bugger off for an hour or so and then shoot back down and all that and sand it all off and skim it again and then bugger off and finish it in the you know, and then carry on in the morning. I think that sounds like a good plan. Quickly knock it back with the DA and then block it out. At least the DA will just get all that stuff off the top, half flattens it out, and then you can block it out. I'll try and get both done and then reapply where needed. All right, catch you later on. Wow, well, good morning. The weather's set. It's actually cold. <laughs> so almost cold enough to crank up the freaking diesel heater. Um, probably not quite that cold, but it's borderline. Um, but the steel's actually quite cold to touch. Um, yeah. I don't know what sort of temperature it is, I, to be honest I wouldn't have a clue, but it's, it's definitely not warm. <laughs> I've seen any stretch of the imagination. It's quite cool. Unfortunately the uh, body filler didn't sand itself last night after I left. Um, 
Oh, it's going to come back down here and then fell asleep on the couch and then Baltimore worked up. It was <laughs> a few hours later, so I didn't get back here. Um, so, yeah, I guess I have to keep saying. <laughs> it's a bit of a pain in the ass, but anyway, uh, it's life. It's just, standing body full, it can be pretty tedious. I must admit that. Um, but the end result is definitely worth it if you're trying to do this sort of thing. Um, I could be not bloody nice to have some help, but again, you know, I just don't have that luxury at the moment, moment unfortunately. But that's alright. So I'll carry on. Well, I think we'll crank up the DA and we'll knock the worst of it off and then we'll start blocking out and go from there. Um, yeah, as much as I was hoping to maybe paint this thing by next weekend, I just don't think it's going to happen. I'm going to obviously keep pushing to get there. I just, I don't think I've got enough days left. So we'll just have to try and stretch it another week if we can. Um, and try and get it done as soon as we possibly can. I just, I just don't have enough, much, enough ads and enough manpower. I think one more person I would do it easy, but um, yeah, I just, I just don't seem to be able to get any help. Um, and I don't really want to bother Dad. Um, I, like, I don't. It's quite good. It helps with me with some of the mechanical stuff. But he's, you know, like I'm pretty knowledgeable with mechanical stuff. But he's just so familiar with this, all this old stuff because he's been working with it for years, you know, restoring trucks and whatever else like that. But yeah, we'll get knocking the body filler off, applying some more, and see if we can maybe get some of this other front stuff. I need to get the rest of the itch. Um, I just took it around the back really quickly the other day. I just, I was hoping the weather was going to fine up um, so I could get that Studebaker out of the road so I could sort of set myself up and get some stuff going, but I don't think it's going to happen. I'm hoping Saturday's meant to be okay, but I'm, I want to go to this car show in the morning. I'm trying to get another car show in. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe, depending, I might just have to work most of the weekend and see if I can get this stuff done. See if I can get, I want to try and, still want to try and get everything in primer this weekend if I can, but it's now Thursday, so I'm running out of days quick. So I'll stop talking and I'll just keep working.
Let's make some more body filler. Alrighty, so where are we at? Um, I'll flick the camera around on it. So, in the moment, I'm just waiting on some body fuller to dry. It's probably dry. But I'm just actually pulling apart the um, hood sides because I'm actually going to take... So I'm going to have to come back down here later on. I'm going to take a uh, stand home and the hood sides on top. I'm actually going to have to do some repairs on these. They're not actually major, but... Um, is it the one? No, it's this one over here. The frickin' hinges all frickin' coming off all the um it's riveted on originally. So I have to find some rivets from somewhere and rivet that back on. I'm trying to work out what the hell these are for. No clue, they're right in the middle of the bonnet, um or hood. Um I don't know if this is meant to be bent or not because um that one's straight. <laughs> I'm just trying to get these pins out so I can clean them out so they'll slide in and out nice. And obviously have to do a little bit of hammering and dialing in the corners. Um, I've got to pull the other side over, but yeah, I'm just going to have to go through. Oh, and this is broken off on here, so I'll have to try and tack that back on. I might have to put just a couple of little small tacks back out here somewhere just to try and get it to hold. Um, 
hopefully once it's back together in the pins and it should be okay. I think these are in reasonable shape. I'm hoping that they're in reasonable shape. Um, I need a bloody good clean up. So I think they actually feel alright. I'm hoping that I can just... I'm going to have to put like a little bit of flour in the corners because there's a couple of little bends and stuff. But they're actually not too bad. I'm hoping that I don't have to do too much to them. Um, just be freaking nice if I don't have to do too much. That was a little... I didn't want them. It's a dent there, which I can probably flatten out. You probably don't have to do too much apart from straighten a couple of corners and then weld that bit of stuff on. See if I can get these pins out. Go through these. I'm going to have to tighten up a few rivets and replace some rivets. Well, I think we should be good. Um, and maybe just straighten the old fin. But I think we should be okay. We'll have a good look around them and I might try and just right quickly run a block over them before I go home. Just otherwise, I might be taking them home for no reason. I might be better off to take a fender home or something. Um, I don't have any ear at home, but at least I can smear a bit of mud and sand it off without coming back down here. Um, so yeah, I just thought that might be a good idea. I can just do it in the shed, take a tin of body fuller home and whatever and scrape a bit on and block a bit off so I can get an extra little bit done kill a few more birds so yeah I think the bot this here should be pretty good um I was oh, I, I was contemplating doing um glazing putty but I think I'll I'll get glazing putty this round we're pretty good I probably spread on a bit much than more than I needed because I actually mixed a bit up a bit too much up. I actually threw some of it away. I'd probably spread it just a little bit further than I really needed to. But I was trying to build up some of these edges that are just a little bit faded away. But I think we should be pretty good. That's a bit down the bottom. Whatever. And around here. Then so we'll get this dialed in and then I'll try and get this stuff cleaned up as well, whether that's in the morning or tonight or what I don't know. So yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. It's a fucking pain in the ass trying to fucking sand that bottom though. I wish I had just done it when I was upside down before I turned it over. <laughs> I probably should have done all the bottom stuff while I was upside down, but I didn't think about it. I probably should have. I'll do that next time. All these, all these things you got to remember. But yeah, I was going to do it on the chassis, but oh, it's just as easy to do it here. I'm just, because uh, as much as I would like to put the chassis back inside, it's it's kind of handy out being out there because I, I don't have the room to sh keep shifting shit around. I dearly love that thing out of the road, and I dearly love this crap, crap out of here. Hopefully I can find another job to bring in here shortly. But yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at. So I'm just mucking around with this stuff. So I'll see if I can get this a bit more apart and we'll do a couple little fixes to this stuff and then we'll block this off again. Quick question, people. Um, I'm mucking around with these sides and hood tops, bonnet tops, whatever you want to call it, and this old 24 Dodge. What are these freaking rivets for? I, I can't work out why these are in the top. That's on both sides. It's kind of weird. I don't know. Like, is there originally a moulding down there or what? I'll have to look on some photos, but it's kind of weird. Like, I can't work out why in the centre. This is the centre hinge. Why there is rivets on both sides. The same places on these. It just... Does it make any sense? I can't work it out because basically, um, look, I've got to obviously take the rivets out to paint them, but are they meant to be there? What are they for? 
because <laughs> I'll just leave them open holes if they're meant to be there but otherwise I might have to like do a few spots weld and just fill them up you know like obviously they're meant to be there but what were they why were they there you know what I mean it's a bit of a weird thing so if you see this video and you can tell me before I start doing finishing work on these because I don't think I'm going to have to do a lot to actually um, like body work, I've got a couple little, little wow, a piece of this on and whatever, but um, I think I'm going to get away with almost no, doing no filler work or anything, it'll just be a bloody good clean up and um, etch them and then prime the, you know, give them a pretty good prime and just sand them out, I'm pretty lucky with these, they're a lot straighter than those ones were. I'm basically going to have to do nothing to them. Um, I haven't got the other side to have a look yet, but you know what I mean? Like these are both pretty straight. One of them had a little wee dint at the top, it might have been this one. Had a wee dint in here somewhere, and I just hammered it out. It's come out really easy. Um, I can't even feel where it was now. <laughs> but yeah, it might have been here. It was in here. I can't even, I can't even tell that it was there now. But yeah, they're just weird. I don't, I just can't work out why they're there. I'm gonna have a look on Google, see if I can see like any photos with something on there. But otherwise, I might just fill them up. It's a pain in the ass because I don't really want to. That's everything's so flat. I don't want to be putting a couple of little zaps out in there and then just start that distorts. And then I've got to start freaking screwing around with the body pillow. I'd rather just leave the holes there and go, well, fuck, there's meant to be something there, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? The only, only little weld I'm going to have to do is just tack that piece of broken hinge off there. I'll just, put a, I'll just weld it on, put a few zaps of weld in there and weld it back on, at least the pin will, once the hinge pins is back in there, it'll be fine. But, yeah, it's a bit weird. I just can't work out that before. It's a bit of a strange one. Right, I was just hunting through, trying to find some decent photos of that area in a car. A lot of them don't really show what right on the top of that, top of the hood. But I did find a few photos that were looking at hood ones and stuff like that. And yeah, and you can clearly see, just like a little dome rivet there, um, on the middle of those hood tops. They're just painted. <laughs> That's weird. It's like... But why? Is it meant to have something underneath it? I don't know. Wouldn't we'll have a bloody clue. So I'm just not quite sure what I should do there. Um, I could put a couple of fresh bifurcated rivets in there and just push the bits open and then just give them a wee scuff and paint them, I guess. I don't know. It's a bit of a weird one. Because they're very flat. I mean, um, when they sandblast and everything, it's worn them off, but... It's weird, you know, like it's like a, it's been a little decoration, but just about all the ones I've seen, well, it's like there's two or three photos I managed to get, you could kind of see them and look like they're all painted body colour, so, oh, that's a bit of a weirdie. It's kind of something there for no reason. It's almost like a little decoration or something. It's almost like there's been something attached to the underside. For when the um, tops up, maybe, but it's there, I guess. I don't know. I'll just I'll set the aside and a top back together, and I'll just close it up. But it's yeah, I don't know. I wonder if it's meant to be like a little had like a little a little buffer pad or something underneath it, so when the um, when the inside panel comes in against it, if you have the top right up. And leaning over, it's kind of like a little buffer pad there to stop it from rubbing. I wonder if that would make sense. Let's have a wee look here. Because it's one of those weird things you just go, why is it there? <laughs> There's always a reason for it, but we'll throw you up on the thing. I'll flick some sh crap back together, sort of, and I'll, we'll just see. Strange. I can't work it out, but 
Yeah. Because there's also those funny little tab, like those little triangle pieces on the... I know, I'll, I'll turn the camera around and show you. Right. So. So if that was sitting up and over, leaning against the other side, maybe this might come down and touched on here. But no, miles away, miles away. Right, nothing, nothing to do there. I don't know. Weird. It's like it's a, it's a little decoration for no reason. I can't work it out. Why do I have these little, little freaking stupid rivet things there? Because they're all worn off from here. But they're going to fall out, you know what I mean? I don't know. Unless I can find something to put back in there, but it's a bit of a strange one. A bit of a strange one. There'll be a reason for it, but. I don't know. Alright, I'll carry on. I might start sanding again. Right, morning guys. So, it looks like the weather's going to actually be good for the next two days. Um, today's Friday. I don't know. There may be some cloud coming, but I know tomorrow's meant to be okay. I think Sunday's meant to be crappy again. Um, and I've got quite a bit of stuff here really that I can put primer on um, so I'm going to take the opportunity as a clean up in here I'm going to try and get the Studebaker outside park it on the grass um, well away from any overspray um, and then have a cleaner here I'm not even I don't know whether that trolley will push the outside see if I can push that outside see whether it'll roll across I might even just Put some boards out there. I can just wheel it out, out the door on this thing. Bolly, sort of thing. We put the Studio Baker body on. Um, let's see if I can get a lot of the shit outside. Have a blow out and a clean out. I just realised my freaking hose reel. The tension has gone on it. The um, retractor, which is a fucking pain in the ass. But anyway, um, you have a clean out. Have a blow out. Blow. We'll have a sweep up and blow out, get rid of the, the worst of the dust off the floor. Um, sort stuff out a bit and try and get. There's a few things obviously that I haven't done, like I've got the rear fenders to do, which I don't think there's a lot of work to do in them. But we'll go around and we'll stuff up. Oh, I've got a couple little, pack, couple little bits to do on one of those hood tops. Um, I was having, I was having a quick wee nosy through on um, Google again and just having a look at those rivet things that are on the top of the hoods. Um, not really sure what to do there. What I might do is just bust them out and just paint them and then I'll just say, well, they're meant to be little rivet things in there. Um, you know, you can do with what you like with it, um, to be honest. No, he can have the paint and if he wants to put some little rivets in there and paint them and put them back in or whatever he wants to do later on. I'll leave that up to him. I'll just say there was some little aluminium rivets in there that were all worn and flogged out. Just took them out and they're just decoration if you want to put something back in there. You could go for your life sort of type thing. I'm not going to stress about it. Um, so yeah, apart from probably painting priming the, the rear fenders a few bits and pieces on the just go around the back of the body I'd like to do the front part of the body but I've got some of it cleaned up um, but I've got to do some scuffing up around the back the back of that front seat and obviously we're going to get some bit of mud on the front part but I might just prime the back part at least anyway um, 
get a, a bunch of prong on there at least we can we can block that out we can do the rest of it later on um, maybe Sunday or something like that or whatever but we'll see how the weather goes but I'm going to take the opportunity because I've got the balance is done the doors are done the hood stuff's reasonable um, here I've got one front fender done the other one's kind of borderline there but I need to do some work on it to finish that um, but I think what I can do is I can prime a lot of this stuff and then I can carry on with some of the other stuff and if I get an opportunity and get it close enough I can just mix up a bit more and do some more of it um, while the day's still good. Cause I, I really want to go to that car show tomorrow. Try and get a, another couple of car shows in the mix to get some views up. Just just see if I can break that monetization. Um, I'm kind of close. But I need a, I need a, a longer, sh big car show where I get a, you know, a thousand views plus, just to break that barrier. It's kind of what I need. <laughs> it's just some of the car shows have just been, it's weird. Like I thought the um, Southern Girls and Gasoline car show video would have done way better than it has. The, the night crews did a better viewing. It's weird, hey. It's like, I think some of the videos that will do really well. Like it's still done okay, like it's still had you know, a few hundred views, but I thought it would have already been way up, you know. Um, like the Cromwell car show, like it's, it's I think it's almost 2,000 views now, which is really awesome. But um, yeah, I thought some of those other car shows would have been like way up there too, but we had some funny ones where the weather was shit and you know, just didn't quite happen so well, and you know, all that sorts of things. So that kind of yeah, hurt me a little bit, but it is what it is, you know what I mean. But, I thought the car show th this year would have been enough to punch me through. It's just, we're not quite there. <laughs> it's frustrating me. Um, yeah, if we had that good run through like we did in 2020, with all that sort of stuff, you know, if we could have had that in 2021, um, you know, when we basically lost a whole year with all that sort of stuff, or a bit more, I would have been well and truly monetized by now, but just, yeah. Anyway, we all know what happened there. But yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, have a bloody clean up so we get some of the shit outside, some of the crap that I ride, and um, work out how I can lay some of the stuff out so I can get some shit primed, basically. Get as much primed as I can. So even if the weather is a bit crappy, I'm not trying to prime so many pieces of. I've got the studio back and back in here. I just thought it's a good opportunity if I can get it outside. It's well away and I can spread my stuff out and I can have a really good go at it. The bulk of it, if you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Yep, yeah, I think. I'm just going to take the opportunity while it's, the weather is good and I know it should be good for two days. So I think we'll get into it. Howdy guys, hope you can see me there alright. I was just, this is actually the ignition switch off the studio bike here because I've been playing around with trying to see if we can get it to more, feel more positive. Um, so I just pulled this apart. Um, it's got little dimples in there so you can sort of feel when it's meant to be on and off. Um, but I was just actually looking at <coughs> these little, I guess little stops. You actually see this, it's been bent round. A little bit. I reckon they're meant to be more in line with each other, but it's one's been opened up. So I'm going to try, well, if I can, see if I can sort of roll these back around a bit, just so they, just so we get a bit more positive feel on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a relay. Um, I'm going to put a relay in the system. Hopefully, and uh, just see what we can do there, just to make things feel a bit better, if you know what I mean. Just try and get a bit more positive spin on all this stuff. Try and make this work a little better, so it feels more positive. Because we try to find a uh, 
a similar sort of switch that maybe we could have put this knob and stuff onto, like even a, a click in and out switch. But we can't really, we haven't found anything suitable. If you know what I mean? So I'm just trying to make this feel a bit more positive. So when you turn it, it um, feels right. It's a very pain in the ass too, because every time you push that in and out, it gets weaker. <laughs>
<laughs> handy, really fucking handy. I'm basically ready to. <laughs> Let's start mixing up some primer. I've got everything laid out that I can can lay out. Um, so I've got all four doors, one front fender, because I haven't got the other one finished. But I don't have anywhere to put it anyway. Valances, one half of the hood, bonnet, whatever you want to call it, and I was going to spray the back of the body with the, you know, with the um, body filler that I've done, you know, I haven't done the front of it, so I wasn't going to worry about the front of it, because I've got other stuff to prime anyway, like in a, another, I don't know, maybe before the end of the weekend, whatever. But I've got the, um, the primer out, so I've got the primer out, which is this, however you want to pronounce it, Robolo, Roberlo, Rub whatever. Um, so this is, and this is the first time I've used this brand um, of stuff. Um, so I've got <laughs> the primer and I've got the hardener, but I've got no fucking reducer to go with it. And like I've got reducer to go with the colour and stuff like that, but yeah, I've got no friggin' I got nothing to go with the bloody um, with the eyeball primer, and as I could use something else, if you know what I mean. I could use something else, like I've got other reducers and stuff here that are different brands, or I've got the Universal, but I don't like doing that because I've seen it before. I know years ago, Dad painted a um, a van. Um, and the fucking paint fell off it, like, 12 months later. You know, he was out there cleaning the van one day with a, um, just, you know, with an electric high-pressure water, you know, water blaster, and the fucking paint peeled off it. You don't want to be painting the cunt again because the fucking paint fell off it 12 months later. Um, because that would come straight back to me and I'd just put it straight back to them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, because this is the only other... Of this universal thinner, which would, would probably work, but you know you you don't want that. Like probably not, I'm hoping to spray it without thinners, but or reduce it. But if you haven't got it and you need it to get it to spray, um, then you're in the shit <laughs> because it just won't spray. If you know what I mean? If it's too thick, it won't spray out. Well, I'm in the shit because I left it out in the sun on trolley on there just to get a bit of heat into it. Um, I haven't really stirred it up yet, but if I have to wait fucking five hours now for a, a can of shit, or I've got to go in there to get it, I'm now fucking th three hours behind the fucking heat wall. And I've got that car sitting outside, and I don't want to shuffle all this shit out of the road so I can get the car inside if it looks like it's going to crap itself. You know what I mean? It's fucking my ass. Anyway. We got off the phone just in case we're going to get a phone call back and, um, yeah, figure out what we're going to do. Oh, well, we'll call that, um, good luck. <laughs> Apparently this is what they use with it anyway. So this, because this was from the paint, um, so they're just going to send me another four litres or a gallon out. But I've got this here to get me by because I've already sprayed some of the black, obviously, on the chassis. Um, so, yeah, but apparently that's what they use. They just they use that with it, so that's cool. I actually thought they would have had their own used their own brand just the duff like for this, but apparently they just use that. They've had had any issues, so I'll take their word for it. <laughs>
All right, so it's after lunch now. Um, so I've just turned all the panels over. Obviously you can't, well, I could turn the body over, that'd be a bit awkward. And no point, I've already painted the inside of it. <laughs> but I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mix up a small amount and I'm just gonna give, actually I'm gonna give these a, a quick scotch brod on the inside just to clean them up and then give them a blow down white. Um, and then I'm just gonna give them a quick once, basically once over because um, well, the rear fender, the fenders, or mud guards, and the balances will all texture coat underneath, um, like I did with the Studi, just a little bit more resistant from stones and shit from, you know, the roads, whatever. Um, and everything else, we'll just get a, a couple of light coats on the inside, um, and that'll kind of be it, if you know what I mean. Um, except for maybe the hood top. It's a wee bit pitted. Um, I might, when I obviously when I paint it or prime it again after we've blocked it out, it might have to have an extra couple of coats. We'll just see how it turns out. It might have to have an extra two or three just to bring it up, um, just with the pitting, just to send it out. It's not bad, but it's a few. Um, but it's straight enough by the looks of it. Um, we'll find out when we do block it, but it's straight enough that I don't think we have to worry about trying to fill anything. It's kind of pointless, if you know what I mean. It's just as easy to block it and put another couple of coats of prime on. Hopefully we've got enough. Should be. Should have to you know what I mean. Um, it just might take an extra couple of coats just to bring it up. Um, but yeah, I think everything else, I'll just give it a couple, a couple of coats underneath and that should be enough to seal the deal if you know what I mean. Maybe later on before we paint, we might give it an extra flick or something like that if we, because we're going to have to give them a, a light sand on the inside so if we get any bare edges, we'll give it an extra coat and just give it a wee light rub with some 600 or something like that. Um, just so it's nice and smooth on the inside of the doors. Not that you're going to see it anyway, but the inside of the um, hood top and the sides now you're going to see that when you've got it open, so we'll give that a nice sand out and whatever. And obviously the rest of it you're not going to see because it's going to be texture coated, but just I just want to give it a, a coat in there so it's got, a, you know, something decent in there before we put the texture coat in there. Um, I could put it straight to the bare metal, but I think I might just give it a coat and then we'll put the texture coat on and then basically you can paint straight over top of it, so. Um, or prime over if you really want to, but because it won't matter if it does get a wee bit of prime over it, it's not going to hurt it any. So yeah, and then we've got to also get a wee bit more of the edges and stuff a little bit better on some of the bits that need it. But yeah, I'll get some paint mixed or some another small batch of primer mixed up. I won't need a lot because I'm not doing the back of the body at this stage. And um, everything else looks pretty reasonable. It's dried. Um, I don't know. I really need to get a, a new tip and needle for that gun or a new tip. It just it doesn't want to seem to. It was I had real issues for it right at the start. Um, it might have been a bit thick. I don't know. It's pretty thick that primer. Because um, I tried to put it through the other gun, it just wouldn't. It just wouldn't even spray it out. Um, so that's a 1.4. That's a 1.8 modified to a 2 mil. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, once I, when I had the second go with it, it come right. Um, it might have been just a bit, a bit thick because I thin it down a little bit more and um, played around with it. But I think I, I really need to get another air cap and needle for it, or just get another block, another 2.2 or something like that. But a better gun, better quality. Maybe that's my issue. I don't know. It just doesn't. I just don't feel like it's quite. For the matter, turns out I've I've got on it. it just I, it should be pouring the paint on. I should be able to pour it on and make it run, just about. But I I would struggle to make it run like I could. But you know what I mean. I'd have to really hold it there to get a real build up. But it just doesn't want to seem to be putting enough on. I don't feel it's putting quite enough on. Like it went on all right, but um, yeah, I probably had to go a wee bit slower than I would have liked, and I just didn't get quite the build up. 
bit older than Fort. Um, but yeah, it's it's laid out fairly. Like it's, sometimes you can get a primers, if you get it on nice and thick, it'll be almost I wouldn't say glossy, but it gets a sheen to it. Where that's quite flat. It's, it, but it doesn't feel chalky, so it hasn't been real dry. It's just it's very flat. Um, I don't know whether it's the paint or not, or the primer. But yeah, I don't know, it just uh, almost doesn't feel like it's gone on quite thick enough. But I had it, we had it going on really nice and glossy and wet, so I don't know, maybe it's just the way the paint dries. But I'll find out. But yeah, I just I wish early on um, when I got all, all the extra stuff, I wish I'd spent a few dollars and um, I can order that as a tip and needle. Um, for that done, a 2.2, that's what I was going to get, order a 2.2 for it, um, and a fresh one, then I would have been able to see what it was, the, what was playing up with it, but yeah, anyway, it seems to be spraying all right in the middle of it, we'll mix up a little, another wee batch and hit the insides and I'll just give them a quick scuff and whatever, but I'll come back to it when I'm finished. Righty, so... My conclusion so far, I actually quite like that stuff. Um, now that I've, well, you know, it's still my first time spraying it, but now that I've done a, a few gunfuls, um, I just basically did full, that was pretty much dead full. Um, most of these just got a, I guess you'd call it a, a couple of quick, quick coats um, on the inside, the doors and stuff like that. I think. Oh, they might have only had one, really, sort of one of the bit. These here gave a, a couple of three coats because they're going to be seen, whereas, well, the doors are, but they might get another coat as they get another prime and block out. Um, but I just wanted to get a bit extra on this because they are a little bit pitted. But the one thing I like about this stuff is one, it, it's not sticky um, when you're spraying it. I feel clean. Um, a lot of times when you sp all that um, auto thing, the stuff I sprayed the studio baker in, that stuff down there, and the uh, blue and blue with the with the blue label and the black label, because um, it was two different stuff. But that was very very sticky feeling after you'd finished. Um, whereas this isn't, and like I've not long sprayed this, like obviously it's not much on there, but like I'm barely leaving a fingerprint in that, and it's been only 10 15 minutes, so it dries really quick. Um, probably the ones that have got about two or three coats on, like this stuff, it's not quite dry yet, but um, yeah, it's. It's not sticky, and I also noticed it when I went to turn these over. Um, they did, they weren't sticky. Like it's not, it's not sticking to anything, which is absolutely freaking awesome. I'll give it that. Normally, tell you know, if you spray a panel up the other way, and even though you've got overspray on it, you can guarantee where the overspray is touched between. The panel and the stand, even though you mightn't spray that side, it'll still want to stick to it. This doesn't. And I really noticed it with the with the hood top and sides because it's normally you're pretty close contact there. Um, like you're basically spraying over the edge of the panel stand and the um, thing. It might be a little bit, but but it's not really like it's not really gluing itself on there. Whereas I know that other stuff did, um, which is absolutely freaking awesome. We're really, really good. Yeah, they just they just haven't stuck. It sort of dries on the panel, but it's not gluing itself to everything else. If you know what I mean. So anything that's sort of by the time it's drifted off the panel, um, it's dry before it sort of lands anywhere else, if you know what I mean. It's not real, that real gummy shit, um, which is good. 
I like that. Um, so, so far, this, however you want to pronounce this sort of stuff, RK calls it Robolo, but they called it R Roberto. Oh, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't matter anyway, but I like this stuff so far. No, um, I haven't sanded it yet, and all this stuff, but so far, I'm quite impressed. I'm quite impressed. Um, I thought it might have been a little bit more sheeny when it dried, but maybe it's just the way it dries. I don't know. Obviously, we still got to do more work on here and whatever, and I've still got to flick a bit of each on there, which I might do shortly. I'll just give this a wee bit of time to dry off, but sometimes, you know, you're a bit dubious of touching stuff or moving stuff for a while. This is like you dry in minutes. It's really good. Like, I wouldn't be afraid to move some of the stuff I've put two or three coats on and lock an air. No worries at all. Pick it up and move it out of the road, you know what I mean? Or at least shuffle it out of the road somewhere. Like you're not scared of touching it and like leaving fingerprints or marks in it. Like, not that it really matters quite so much when you're doing this sort of stuff, but if you're going to spray one side and then you want to come along a wee while later, if, especially if you don't have the options of hanging stuff up, um, you know, using panel stands, like me, at least, you know, an hour, a good hour or so later, you know, if you bugger off for lunch and have lunch and it may take an hour and a half or something like that and then come back, you know, you can flick it over and, um, because that's pretty much what I did. I finished painting here. I was back here within, well, about an hour and ten minutes. I turned it over. It was fine, you know, and they had three coats on the outside. Um, so, yeah, it's great stuff. Like it's not terribly hot today, it's not cold, but it's not terribly hot today. Um, I've still got my jersey on, but yeah, oh, I'm quite impressed so far. The sanding will definitely tell what it's like with paper, whether it gums it up. Um, easy, you know, like sometimes you'll get paper if you sand it too quick. Like, you know, if you sand it, say, the next day, sometimes you'll get it and it'll just pull, pull up on the paper. Um, so yeah, that'll tell. Like I'm, I might try sanding something tomorrow morning just to get a feel for it. Like I'll probably leave most of it till Monday. But um, at least now I can carry on with this stuff. I can spread a bit of mud in the bottom. Maybe try and get that other one finished. And um, now that I've got these done, I've got that little repair to do on that other hood top. I still haven't put, um, what do you want to call it? Um rivets in here i'll get these out because we're going to give them another prime anyway so i wasn't too panicked i just want to get it a good initial prime so we'll have to put some rivets in there at some point i'll have to find something that'll fit and um we'll bang some new rivets in there i see they're being put in frontwards and backwards and so it's not going to really matter too much i'll just find some rivets and we'll put them in um whatever i can find that fits and looks like half okay um but, uh, yeah, I might better get that other hood top and that sorted out and reprime the front and whatever. Um, and we'll have a good look around these panels now that they're dry once I've turned them back over. And we'll just have a nosy and just see what everything looks like. Um, and, we, you know, if we, if we want to, we might better put an extra couple of coats on some of these if they look pretty decent. It's kind of what I was thinking. If they don't, if that doesn't look like I'm going to be chasing too much. But I'd like to, well now that I've gotten this far, I'd like to give them a good block with 220 and um, bring them right back to when I'm touching steel again. Um, obviously not big marks everywhere, but as soon as I'm getting a reasonable touch on steel, you know, stop and then we'll smash them with another couple of coats as long as I don't have to do any little fills or anything like that. Um, that's one thing I will have a good look at before I do start sanding. We might just double check because you can normally see a wee bit easier with stuff when it's like this and see whether you're going to need to fill anything. Like any little marks. You know, look, I'm. I oh, can't see the freaking phone. You know, a lot of little bits and pieces like this. Most of that will sand out. Um, but you now, if you've got any little holes that you happen to come across or see that you missed with body filler and whatever, you know, I might better just mix up a little bit of putty, 
scrape it and then when I'm blocking it off, you know, you're already ahead of the game. I've got little bits like this where I've missed. I probably haven't gotten sand enough filler off here, but there's probably a couple of little spots like that I can just, I can nip a little bit of glazing putty in before I go fast any much further, if you know what I mean. But the edges actually look quite good. Dry is very flat, this stuff, I'll give it that. But yeah, like I'm not scared to touch that. It's dry, <laughs> which is a good sign. It means it should sand easy. But yeah, at least we'll now better have a, a good look, block out, and um, go from there. Hopefully we'll better pull it up reasonably quick. But I would like to paint the body on the car with the doors on. Um, or at least flick the jams, set the doors on, and then paint the whole outside of the body in one hit. Um, that's kind of my thinking too with the body. If I can get it back on the car this week, next week, whatever, once we sort of get this other stuff cleaned up, because that means I can get this stuff off, and I can do a little bit of final work up, that's why I haven't put any body floor in here yet, um, because I'll have to put a little bit of body floor up in here, once we get this shit off, um, and up here, once we clean it up, like obviously there's upholstery and whatever else and shit comes up, I'm guessing up to some of these spots, but we need to get that off and we can clean it up and we scrape or whatever and blow an extra couple of coats in there and make it look pretty, if you know what I mean. But, yeah, we're really getting there. Brody, I'll stop crapping on. We might see if we can get some of this other stuff cleaned up. So we might, maybe I'll do, do a little extra flick, but I reckon maybe in the morning or something like that, if I can get some of this dialed in. Um, yeah, we'll at least get some etch on some of these other couple of panels before I start. Well, I moved everything around and I was like, oh, I'll go outside and follow the old girl up. And it fired up, run for a bit, coughed, and died, and now I can't get it to run. I've got fuel, I've got power written, I've the ignition, I've got power to the coil. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I've got fuel to the car. I took the line off and it's when you turn the tap on there's fuel running into the carburetor so it's definitely fuel there. So I don't know, it's just weird. It's like whether the timing's jumped or something silly's happened. I don't know. It's weird. I don't know, I just can't get it to fire up to get it back in here. <laughs> Cause it fired and then yeah, it was just like it run for a couple of seconds and I went to put the hood down, you know, to make sure the fuel wasn't um the carburetor wasn't flooding itself or anything stupid because it's still a bit temperamental and um, by the time I got around the other side it sort of coughed and died and I was like, oh, it's weird so I thought, oh, maybe it's out of, run out of fuel, hasn't sucked enough fuel through so I uncracked the line, turned the you know, or turned the tap off uncracked the line, then turned it back on again and there's plenty of fuel there checked the spark, I thought maybe, or maybe the ignition had turned off, so I don't know <laughs> so I got the old man coming down Give me a hand if we can get this thing in here, inside. <laughs> Bloody thing. Oh, it'll be something silly, hopefully.